All right. Welcome to our Tuesday evening Bible study. We're glad to have you here tonight. And if you're joining us on streaming, we're saying hi to you as well. And glad that you're able to join us. Before uh, we're here at the beginning, let me do this first. If you memorize your three passages, raise your hand. Whoever memorized their three passages, hey, I, <laughs> I have to admit, I, I, I got, yeah, okay, let's do two out of three. Anybody? Okay, two out of three. You know what? I'm not going to make anyone say it tonight. So don't worry. I know, I know you worked hard at it. Um, but my wife, Christy, she put together a nice bookmark. So if you, put, if you did two out of three, I'm going to go ahead and hand this bookmark to you. So I'm trying to remember who all... Now, you can't raise your hand now if you didn't raise your hand before, okay? Because you know, you know the pressure's off now. You don't have to say it. But I'll go ahead. I don't know if I can do this with the, with the camera going. Who can help me out here? Eliana, you want to be on camera? <laughs> she said, you're getting your hair done. Um, that's okay. You want to, can you do it real quick? I think it was Chris, you, Elijah, Pastor Dan, Miss Amy. Okay. Now we're going to do three more verses next week. And I, I'm going to remind you because I know many times I need reminders uh, to help me. The week gets busy. A lot of things are going on. I know my kids are already memorizing verses throughout the week. But we all need that little reminder. On WhatsApp, I'll just send you a quick reminder during the week and then maybe towards the end of the week as well to prepare you for Tuesday. But we're going to have three verses, new verses for this week that we'll memorize for next week. How many of you are good at memorizing? Anybody here good at memorizing? Elijah, he raises his hand. He's a brave one. I'm not. It takes me work. And the older I get, the more work it is. Uh, so, but I know you can do it. And with the Holy Spirit's help, we'll get these verses memorized. I believe they'll be a, a, a tremendous help to you as we go through this lesson together. The power of words. Now, I, I want your mind to start getting warmed up to what we're going to be talking about today. Last week, we dealt with the power of the tongue and, and how the impact of the tongue what could be destructive. Uh, there's a fire, and I think we'll go to the first, maybe the first one here, because it was kind of a review, and it talks about the tongue, how great a fire it, it kindles a fire, and here it, it talks about becoming, you know, making a fire in the great forest, sets it ablaze, so something that's small becomes very big, and we know that that's what happens with our tongue, our words, when we start saying things that become destructive in relationships, in our home, uh, wherever we are, many times it doesn't just stay small, does it? It becomes very, very, very big. And before long, you have this gigantic blaze. I know if you're you know, screening your eyes at that picture, it actually is kind of a forest on fire. Um, a, lot of, a lot of different colors there. But I wanted to remind you last week, the destructive force of our tongue. This week we're going to move to more of a healing aspect of the tongue. We're going to look at how the tongue heals. We're going to have three verses that we're going to look at today. We're kind of going to exposit these verses, and then we're going to use these verses to go into detail of how our tongue can be used for benefit, for, for glorifying God instead of for destructive purposes. But I'll give you the three verses quickly. Now, we're going to go through them one at a time here in our notes. But Proverbs chapter 16 and verse 24, uh, Proverbs chapter 10 and verse 20, and then Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 16. Those are the three verses we're going to be dealing with today. Did everybody get the notes? Let me ask that before we get started. I don't want anyone to not have the notes. Everybody get the notes. Okay, good. Good. All right. When we look at when we look at Proverbs chapter 16 and verse 24, that's going to be the first verse we're dealing with. We see our first point tonight is the power to heal. The power to heal. We're talking about a great power here, and we'll get this PowerPoint going. Maybe it's the way you hold your tongue here. Get to the next slide. <laughs> 
but uh, the power to heal. You'll see it up here in a moment. Okay, go back one. We'll go back one. We'll jump back one here. Can, can you do it from there, or do they do it? No, there's another one after that. There should be. Is that it? Okay, that's it. That's it. So the power and impact. So we see, first of all, we look at the destructive force. Secondly, we see something that heals. You know what that is? You see it up on the screen. It's a honeycomb. How many of you have tasted, I'm sure most of you have tasted honey, right? Okay, we, we get our honey from Arua. Very sweet taste. Honey has a medicinal impact to it. It has natural sugar. So it bolsters our system. It helps when we're maybe tired or when we're, when we're down. I know when we're doing Taekwondo and our bodies are depleted from energy. Now, I don't go drink a gallon of honey. But honey could help to help bring my energy level back. Unless you have a sugar imbalance and then there could be a big problem. So don't do that. But honey has medicinal purposes to it. And when we look at Proverbs chapter 16 and verse 24, it says, pleasant words, if you're there or you can look on the screen if you're in your Bible. It says, pleasant words are as in honeycomb, sweet to the soul, and health to the bones. Now, Pastor Dan has used body, soul, and spirit. We saw this in the, in the great message that he preached on Sunday, our Alive in Christ series. And as I look at the body, soul, and spirit, we see, first of all, I wanted to show you the model of man. Now, up here, you can hopefully see it better than I can see it on the back screen. But we are a triune being, tripart. We have a body, we have a soul, and we have a spirit. And we see in Proverbs 16, 24, it mentions right off the bat how honey, pleasant words, are like a honeycomb, sweet to the soul. Now, what is the soul? If you look on the diagram here, the soul is the seat of the mind, the emotions, and the will. We have also the spirit, and if you've taken discipleship, you've seen this diagram already. But we have the spirit, which is dead and really dead in trespasses and sins until it's made alive in Christ. And then we have the body. All three work together. And after we're saved, we're going to show you a diagram here in the near future. What takes place when the Spirit is awakened by the Holy Spirit, how it affects the soul, how it makes an impact on the body. But pleasant words, those words that are good. I want to ask you, we're going to get your minds going here. What are some areas or what are some pleasant words that you can think of? We may, I think we asked this maybe a little bit last week, but I want to, maybe that'll help you think again this week. What are some pleasant words that can be an encouragement to someone? Maybe revive someone. Maybe someone's going through a little depression. They're discouraged. What are some pleasant words that you can give to somebody else in the workplace? Yes, Becky. You're not alone. You're not alone. Amen. Amen. Sometimes, Sometimes people, people get discouraged. They think no one else is there. They're going through a hard time. Just telling them, and even you could use Scripture, there is a friend that sticks closer than a brother. God will never leave you or forsake you. Those are pleasant words. And they can revive someone. Those words are sweet to the soul. Where the seed of the mind, will, and emotions are, are being. What else? Any, anybody else think of... Yes, Lord. You did great today. Maybe in school. Maybe in grades, quiz, test. Good. Anything else? Yes, Dan. I'm here for you. I'm here for you. Give me a call. You know, and, and we as pastors, we want to make ourselves definitely available for you, for our people. That if something's going on, you're discouraged, you're downtrodden, our wives are there as well. For you ladies, you give a call, 2 o'clock, 3 o'clock in the morning. You just really feel like there's a tremendous attack on your life. Okay, maybe don't call it, no. You, you can call us any time. <laughs> we might be a little groggy at 2 or 3 o'clock in the morning. Uh, we might be incoherent for a few minutes. But we want to be there to help you and, and make a difference in your life. Pleasant words. Good. Anybody else? Those are great examples of pleasant words. Okay? Anyone? Okay, so we go on. We go on to the next. Now, when you look at this diagram, you see the carnal Christian life. The carnal Christian life. And I'll look this way real quickly, but the soul is wrapped up in inferiority. This is someone who's a Christian but not walking in the Spirit 
not being led by the Spirit, not being one who is giving pleasant words, because really in their soul, they're walking not in the Spirit. We see inferiority, insecurity, inadequacy, doubt, worry, fears, which leads to frustration. That's what's impacting your soul. Why is that? It's because you're not walking in the Spirit. Here's where problems come in family, money, work, etc. And what's amazing is that when your spirit is that way, it affects the body, doesn't it? This has been proven through study. Is that when you're in the midst of worry and doubt and fear, this could happen, maybe you lose a job. Uh, maybe, maybe you're having family issues to where there's strife and there's fighting and there's arguing. Maybe a husband-wife situation where the husband doesn't even want to come home at night because of the tension that is going on between the husband and the wife. Now, what does that create in the body? We see some issues here. Anybody want to answer that? What does that create in the body? Yes, Amy. Stress. Stress. Pain. 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 Yeah. And, and sometimes, sometimes they just say, hey, well, I'm sick with something, but in reality, they're just having a panic attack because of the stress in their life. Some people have thought they're having a heart attack, but it's a panic attack. Stress caused by worry, doubt, and fear. What else is something that doctors say is common? I'm not sure if it's totally common here, but yes. High blood pressure It's becoming an issue, but there's something else I'm thinking of, and we heard it all the time in the village. It was a diagnosis. Ulcers. I mean, that seems to be what everybody's battling with, and it could be because of certain diets and some of the starchy or the acids in the foods and the fruits. But that can be caused by worry, doubt, fear, how that affects the body. So pleasant words. And when, you're, when your spirit, and we'll go on here, and I'm going to get to the, the next uh, slide that's coming up that's in the diagram. Not yet. Hold on. We're going to get to one. To what does it look like when you are walking in the spirit? But what my point is, is that when you're having pleasant words, when your life is bound in following the Spirit's leading. Pleasant words come out, but it gives sweetness to your soul. Your mind, will, and your emotions are wrapped up, which gives you, uh, it gives you an attitude of patience, love. Um, following Galatians chapter 5 and the fruits of the Spirit that come out of that, we see those things taking place. But not only is it sweet to the soul, but what's the second part of Proverbs chapter 16 and verse 24 say? It's what? Health to, the Health to the bones. Health to the body. So we see there's a power to heal that comes in both the soul and then the body. Now, when we look at the body, health here in this verse, it's a, it's a purely Hebrew root, which is found over 60 times in the, New, in the Old Testament. The meanings are straightforward, and most of the time, it directs towards the healing of the physical body. It's directing towards that. And we see many instances throughout Scripture in the Old Testament and New Testament where it's talking about health, where it's talking about the body physically being healed. Many times, it's God doing the healing but we know that through our words and even as we understand the Word of God and memorize Scripture and we're speaking the Word into people's lives, that God can use that to bring comfort, to bring healing, to bring reviving in the life of someone who's really been down. You know, maybe you know of someone even today really struggling. Maybe they're depressed. You're thinking about them in your mind. What can you do? Pick up the phone. Write an email. Contact them. Social media. Say, hey, I'm praying for you today. God has a plan and purpose for your life. He's there for you. Give them some scriptures they can read. Those are things that will help, help to revive them in their Christian walk as they're a believer. We see, secondly, let's go on to the next slide. And this is a slide where I want to show you the Christ-centered life. Now, what happens when Christ, as we see the sea, is in the middle? It's in control. I say the sea could be Christ, but the sea could be control. The Holy Spirit's controlling your life. In your soul, you have unspeakable joy. What else do you have? You have His mind. That's the mind of Christ. You have His peace, His strength, 
His resources. Amen to that. Boy, do we need the resources of Christ every day. Philippians chapter 2 and verse 5. You know that passage? Anybody know it? Philippians chapter 2 and verse 5. Look it up quickly. Philippians chapter 2 and verse 5. When you get there, somebody go ahead and read it for me. Philippians chapter 2 and verse 5. Try it. Let this mind be in you, which was also where? It's in Christ Jesus. One of my favorite verses, Galatians chapter 2, I mean, yeah, 2 and verse 20. I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but it is Christ that lives within me. And it goes on, the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me, who gave himself for me. So as you're looking at this diagram, you realize Christ is the center when you have the Spirit, you're walking in the Spirit, it's, He's in control of your everyday life, you've allowed that to take place, you're not living carnally, you're not living in the flesh, you're not making wrong decisions according to the, the iniquity that comes through the flesh in your life. There are, there, there are ways that just help develop you to become the person God wants you to be. And that's where this joy comes from. As I'm reading biographies, I'm still going through Hudson Taylor. What's amazing to me is there were a group of people, the first group that were sent over to China. They were on this boat for several months. And as they, any of you been on a boat? Anybody here been on a boat? Okay. Now, this was a pretty good sized boat because it had to travel across the ocean. And you've been in Lake Victoria, maybe when the water's getting a little rough. And you have these little waves. Maybe the waves are getting a little bigger. I know Elijah and I were in a boat with uh, some missionary friends. Elijah's back here. And the waves, the storm was blowing in. The waves got a little bigger. And one of the, the young men who was with us, uh, the missionary's son, got nervous, got scared, and just started crying. I was getting a little nervous. This boat was not big. I thought it might tip over on us. And I didn't want to be swimming back to shore, not in Lake Victoria. But this group of, of Chinese, not Chinese, but they were, Europe, they were Europeans going to the, the China. The first day when they were getting acclimatized, they, they got seasick. And so for the first day, Hudson Taylor was saying that the crew, along with Hudson Taylor and his wife, because they had experience in this, were trying to keep them hydrated because they just threw up all the time over, de over the deck. And they were having a hard time getting used to this. But they were going for months. They finally got used to it, but they never lost the joy of Christ and what they were going to do. By the end of that journey, the story goes that they're almost three quarters, if a little bit more than three quarters of the crew came to know Jesus Christ. They were coming to the meetings because they were watching this group that had given up everything to head to China, even during a rebellious time in China where many people were dying. Yet they had this unspeakable joy. How can that happen? Because the Spirit is in control. We see here there are two examples, and Watchman Nee, a theologian, calls this way of life the normal Christian life. And then the other one, Hudson Taylor, who I just mentioned, called it the exchanged life. The exchanged life. We were walking in darkness before. Now we're able to walk in the light. Before, we could not overcome fear, doubt, depression. But after we are saved, we can have a joy that the world does not understand. How is your life tonight? How is the joy that you have in Christ? Are you at peace? Or are you still struggling internally? As you, if you are, you need to look and see, is this, is this flesh? Is this what I'm battling with that I need to give to the Lord? part of the flesh that I'm, I'm dealing with, and I need to give that over to Christ. We need to look at these things. And as we understand this, we are able to fulfill Galatians 5, 22 and 23 and have the fruits of the Spirit constantly. We see number two, not only do we have power to heal, number one. Number two, we have power of, the power of connection to the source of wisdom chapter 10 and verse 20, you can read the screen or look on in the Bible. It says, the tongue of the just is as choice silver. 
The heart of the wicked is little worth. The tongue of the just is choice silver. The heart of the wicked is of little worth. So we see, first of all, in this passage, I want you to notice the connection. The connection. That will be number one in your notes, or we can say letter A, under number two. The connection. It says in the beginning of that passage, it talks about being just. Our words and how God works in us through those that are just, that is what is meaningful, powerful. It's like choice silver. So when we are just, it is having the mind of Christ, it is Christ that lives within me, that is the connection that helps us to continue living our life, making a difference for Christ. Jude 22 and 23, and of some having compassion, making a difference. The only way we can make a difference in the lives of those around us is if we are relying on that connection, if you know Jesus Christ, if you're relying on that connection we have in Christ. The struggle we face every day is, is our own making. We get our eyes off of the Lord, like Peter did when he was walking on the water. He began looking at the circumstances, and I would do the same thing. I, I, I'm no different than probably the way Peter did it. It would have been exciting for the first several seconds, looking at Christ, doing something miraculous. And then the next moment, I look around me, and this was a storm. I equate it to the raging storm of life. We're going through, we're having our faith is, is strengthened, we're seeing God work, something miraculous is going on, and then Satan continues to hit us in our life, and that storm, those waves, maybe, maybe losing a job, maybe money running out, there's a lot of things we can mention that would add to this storm. Our eyes get off of Jesus Christ, and what begins to take place? We begin to sink. But you know the beauty of all that? is that the moment Peter was thinking again about Christ and said, Lord, save me, Jesus was there to lift him up out of the water and the despair and, and, the, and the struggle that he was facing, literally. Jesus will do the same thing for you as you're struggling in your life. The storms of life around you are happening. You cry out to Christ. He reaches down. But that's the power of the connection that we have. And then what goes along with that is the source of wisdom. So we look at the idea of Proverbs chapter 10 and verse 20, and, and point back, can you quickly point back to that verse? Just jump back quickly here. The tongue of the just. This is the speech of those who are, I can say connected, those who are doing what is right. The speech of those who are connected are as choice silver. And you can fast forward there to the next two. Choice silver. Now, what does choice silver mean? Not only do we have the connection, but we have the quality. We have the quality. Someone who's not saved, yes, they can give pleasant words. They can give encouraging words. But those of us who are saved, we have the connection in the power of the Holy Spirit using the Word of God. That combination, as we are speaking to people, it becomes something that is claimed power to the life of someone else. The Word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. It's amazing. Someone who gives themselves to Jesus Christ and lives that life and is walking in the Spirit with all of that connected together can make a tremendous, powerful impact as they speak to others and the truth that's going on in others' lives. And that's why the words, I believe, are used here, choice silver. Now, I have some pictures that I added on to this, and hopefully they'll come up. But we have the refining fire. If you've studied the process of refining, whether it be silver or gold, you realize there's a tremendous heat that has to be placed on the silver to get what is called the dross out. It's the bad parts of the metal that are included when they mine it out. If you don't get the dross out, you don't have the finished final product that is pretty, that is smooth. That is, that is shiny, because that draw ruins it all. But with the refining fire, it purifies. It makes something that is clean. It makes something that is pure. And that's what choice silver is. It is words that are refined, words that are pure, words that are powerful. 
as we speak to others who are struggling, who are facing difficulties. We as Christians are able to do that. And that's exciting. And we see the finished product. After we go through the refining fire, I put some rings on there. Yes, there's some diamonds included in there for you ladies. But as a, as a whole, we see the silver. We see how polished it is, how pretty it is. There's no dross involved in that finished product because it is choice, because it is perfect, because it has gone through the process. And in our lives, we look at this quality. It's tested purified by fire and we see the opposite spectrum in this verse as you look at 10 and verse 20 it talks about the little worth of the words that are not led by that are not said through somebody who is just or holy those that are wicked those words have little worth so what kind of words are we using today proverbs chapter 8 and verse 20 let's turn there quickly proverbs chapter 8 and verse 20 It says, let me get the right one here. I mean, nine. I'm sorry, eight and verse 10. Excuse me, eight and verse 10. It says, Receive my instruction and not silver, and knowledge rather than choice gold. Something we would rather do than to have here in this instance, choice gold, is receiving the wisdom and instruction of Christ. And if we go to verse 19, it says, My fruit is better than gold, yea, than fine gold, and my revenue than choice silver, following after God. And we see again here refined silver and what is better. So we're looking at the opposite spectrum. But pleasant words, purified, refined in the fire, are what we want to have as we speak to others. The source of wisdom. What is the source of our wisdom? Do you know? Proverbs talks about it. The Word of God, the fear of the Lord, knowing who God is. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. But as we look at His Word and we make it part of our lives, that's where our worth becomes. That's where we see, we gather, we understand who we are. The source of our wisdom. Today, as we look at psychology, we see so much of how man is trying to figure out how this world works within its, his own reasoning. If you've studied history, you've studied the Age of Enlightenment. You have all of these, uh, we, call them, we call them psychologists today, but philosophers that tried to make sense of what they could taste, feel, touch, see, and hear and fit it into how life is. So they were drawing their conclusions by their own reasoning and their own mind instead of garnering what God has given to us through His Word. Helping us, helping to find out what God wants, studying His Word, making it be an impact in our lives through Jesus Christ. We need to realize our source of wisdom is Christ and God and no other. And then thirdly, as we go on here, we see the power of a good report. The power of a good report. We're going to read a little bit longer passage here, but Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 16, I have that one listed, but, and you can look on the screen for that, but I would encourage you to turn in Scriptures to Ephesians chapter 1, because I believe this context carries, you have to read this whole passage to really get the understanding of the entire context. We're going to, we're going to read Ephesians chapter 1, verse 16 through the end of the chapter. So follow along in your Bible with me. If you're at home, please follow along in your Bible that you have there. It says, I want to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers, that the God, sorry, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of Him. The eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of His calling and what the riches of the glory of His inheritance in the saints, and what is the exceeding greatness of His power to usward, who believe according to the working of His mighty power, which He wrought in Christ when He raised Him from the dead and set Him at His own right hand in the heavenly places." far above all principality and power and might and dominion and every name that is named, not only in this world, but also that which is to come. And hath put all things under His feet 
and gave him to be the head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of him that filleth all and in all. Now, as we look at our words and how they make an impact in the life of someone else, we go back to verse 16. Let's do that quickly. I'm going to bounce you back here. It says, Cease not to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers. One thing that Paul did, yes, he rebuked sin. And he, when, when there was something going on within the church that was not good or right, Paul would come out and tell them, hey, you need to stop. You need to stop doing adultery. You need to stop spreading lies with one another. But one thing that Paul did and wanted to encourage the people in his churches with is that, hey, I'm praying for you. I hear what is good in your life, how you are growing in the grace of God, encouraging others by giving a good report to those that are without is a powerful way to be able to use your words in a pleasant way to glorify God, to bring healing to those that are around. Now, as we think of giving a good report, I I want you to think in your mind here quickly, and I'm going to let you respond just for a few minutes, maybe a few seconds. We'll see how long it lasts. But if you're giving a good report about somebody to someone else, maybe you're talking about someone within the church, it's your friend, how would you going about do that, doing that which would be a good report? It would be a good testimony. What, what are something you could say? What is something, excuse me, you could say about someone that would be a good report? Can you think of anything? I start out by, as I see someone maybe within the church that has encouraged someone else, that has that gift of encouragement, and I'm talking to someone else about that person saying, I'm not, this is not anyone we have, this is just a name, but I'm, I'm talking to my wife and I'm saying, man, John, I saw him in church and he, man, he did a great job at encouraging a brother who was really down. And he, has, he just has that gift of encouragement and God's really using him that way. That would be giving a good report of someone else using your words in a wise way. What would be another, maybe something else you could say? Yes. Someone's a hard worker. worker. Yeah, I I saw them in church. They were helping to clean, and they weren't even asked to do it. It's a good risk. That's a good report. That's the power of giving a good report. Or maybe someone else outside understands. Hold on a second. I'll get to you. Maybe someone outside understands, hey, that church, Faith Baptist Church, is a church that prays. Why? Why do they know that? Because when we're watching, we're hearing about all the time the prayer list and the prayer request, and and people are talking about the WhatsApp, how when prayer requests are given, you know, they're prayed for. Everybody's encouraging one another. That's a good report. Yes? You took initiative. Yeah. You saw something that needs to be done. I was always told part of character when I was getting my training in college is that if you see, maybe you're in a building, maybe you're walking in a compound, this was in our college setting, is that if you saw trash, part of having character was that you just didn't walk by it. You had the initiative to pick it up and put it in the waste bin, waste basket. Initiative, thank you. That was a great example. Anyone else? Something that could be a good report. Those are all good examples. Anything else? Yes. They told the truth, even in a difficult situation. Someone who has that honesty, that character, that they're going to, no matter what pressure comes on them, they're going to tell the truth. And they're known for being honest. Lawyer friend of ours was talking about one judge, one judge in Uganda, that many of the lawyers like to go to, to be in his court. Why? Because he's known for being fair. He's known for looking at the facts and letting the lawyer do the case without taking bribes, without you know, anything that's going on like that. And they, they want to go, even if it's out of the jurisdiction, sometimes they can't do that because it is. But this judge had the reputation for following what the law says and being fair, hearing both sides. A good report. What are people saying about us? What are we saying about others? We have to be so careful with how we speak, what we say, making sure we're ready in our hearts. Because you know what? It goes back 
to our triune being. If Jesus Christ is not the center of our lives, if the Spirit is not the one leading and directing you and I, we're not ready to speak. Things that come out of our mouth are going to be damaging. They're going to be destructive. They're not going to be healing. They're not going to be sweet. They're going to be hard. And we have, I tell you, it, this takes something that we should be doing every single day, preparing ourselves to be ready and then being truthful. We must be ready first. But then it, it's, it's a truth that comes out of our heart because we are living a life that's pleasing to the Lord. Giving a good report. So three areas tonight as we look at the tongue that has the power to heal. We see number one. We see number two, we had the power of the connection. Number two was the power of connection to the source of wisdom. This was Proverbs chapter 10 and verse 20. And then finally, number three was the power of a good report. Now, Philippians chapter 4 and verse 8, and we'll close with this verse. But Philippians chapter 4 and verse 8, let's turn there quickly. We have Ephesians. If you were in Ephesians, we have Philippians. This is a verse that I use to prepare my mind to make sure that what I'm thinking lines up with what the Holy Spirit wants me to be thinking. As I'm walking in the Spirit, I will be thinking this way. It says, finally, my brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue, and if there be any praise, think on these things. What should we do if somebody comes to us talking a bad report about someone else? How often does this happen? A lot. How damaging is it when we sit there and we listen? And not stopping there, maybe we take it out and use that bad report, and we carry the bad report to others. It's a lot of damage. There's no healing involved in that. But as we follow Philippians chapter 4 and verse 8, we let our minds be consumed with these aspects of what the Spirit is doing in our hearts. We know that we're going to make a difference in the lives of those that are around us. We'll have a church that is pleasing to the Lord and something that is equally important. As we're pleasing to the Lord, we have a church that is known, we get a good report of being a church that loves people, that loves God, that speaks truth, and that makes sure that we guard what we say. Not just throwing words out as we are following the flesh in our lives. So tonight, as we close this time of Bible study, just a quick challenge to you. Before we go into our time of prayer here, a quick challenge to you and those maybe who are still listening is to think about, number one, are we letting the Holy Spirit be the center of our life? Is Christ the center? We mentioned Galatians 2.20. We mentioned Philippians chapter 2 and verse 5. Is the mind of Christ in us? Or are we letting the flesh lead us? Maybe even right now there's a, a, an internal turmoil. Maybe something happened to us today at work where someone just spread a lie or was gossiping. Or, or maybe you heard something that hurt and you've let bitterness well up. Maybe, maybe there's something inside you that has caused fear. Doubt. Doubt in God. Those are things that we need to confess before the Lord so that we can have a heart that is peaceful, a joy unspeakable and full of glory. Maybe we just need to confess that now. Maybe in your heart you need to confess that as we end up closing in prayer tonight. Maybe you just need to take some time in your own heart to say, Lord, forgive me. Forgive me for doubting your word. Forgive me for doubting you. Forgive me for letting something on the outside that has been done by someone else to me in my life control my speech and how I talk to others. Words are a powerful thing. They can be used for great good as they're led by God, or they can be used for great destruction as they are led by our flesh. 
Let's make sure that we're being led by the Spirit so that we don't fulfill the lust of the flesh. All right. Well, we're going to go into our time of, um, of prayer. And for those of you at home, I'm glad you joined us. And you'll be getting the prayer list, and you'll be able to pray, and I hope you will pray at home. Thank you for joining us tonight, and I uh, appreciate you being a part of our lesson. We're just going to go into some prayer requests, and we're going to be taking prayer requests. And so I just want to say thank you, and we'll stop this portion. Um, I appreciate you joining in with us tonight. For us, let's go ahead and go.